climate activists are getting together to push politicians on the climate emergency. Scientists are clear on the impact of man-made global warming. And populations around the world are being affected. Ravaged by fire. Large swathes along the west coast of the United States have been devastated. This year's wildfire season has been one of the worst ever. More than 11,000 square kilometers of forest and towns have been reduced to ash and rubble. Entire communities have gone up in smoke. All of a sudden, the mountains were just ablaze. A few days ago, you know, it was way down uh, to the east, and I wasn't worried about it. And all of a sudden, it just came across without any wind. I couldn't believe it. In Brazil, too, the number of fires in the wetlands of Pantanal more than doubled in the first half of 2020, compared with last year. Then there is Batagaika Crater in the Siberian Arctic, around a kilometer wide and 100 meters deep. It's been created by the melting permafrost. When organic matter melts, it releases greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, and that speeds up global warming. On a small scale, the processes we are seeing with the Batagaika crater are happening everywhere. Ice melts underground, the ground subsides. That's taking place. So when people look at the Batagaika crater, they can see the perfect example of why you shouldn't joke about the permafrost. Rising temperatures caused by the climate crisis are leading to more drought. The result is more and more intense wildfires. Grounded planes and a nearly shuttered industry because of COVID-19 saw daily carbon dioxide emissions fall globally by 17 percent in April compared with 2019. But levels are now increasing again. Experts say action is needed now. Uh, but I think there's also the chance, if, if now the right measures are being taken, if we invest into low-carbon uh, solutions, renewable energy, sustainable transport, uh, that we can uh, avoid getting back to the previous levels. But this requires political will. With activists and climate advocates due to take part in 2020's biggest climate event this week in New York, they'll want to kickstart that elusive political will. And we are joined now by Stefan Ramstoff, climate scientist at the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. Welcome to the program and thank you for joining us. What, what kind of action do you hope this year's Climate Week will generate? Well, the action very much depends on the national governments. The UN has basically done what it can do by reaching the Paris Climate Agreement. And the key action we need now is that every government actually implements the Paris Climate Agreement. And unfortunately, we are seeing that only by very few countries that they have sufficiently uh, ambitious plans and actions. And what we're also seeing, I mean, we, we saw the images in, in our piece a bit earlier, um, we're seeing climate events. So, for example, California going up in flames. Some people still arguing that it's a weather phenomenon due to bad forestry. Put, put these events into the broader context for us. What, what is your answer to people who say that? Well, it's becoming ever more clear that extreme events are enhanced and made a lot worse by climate change. And in terms of the wildfires, it's something the Intergovernmental Panel has warned long ago in its reports that these would increase as it gets hotter, as it gets drier in some regions of the world. And it's really a no-brainer that this enhances wildfires. On the other hand, we have more extreme rainfall events as well. That's basic physics because a warm atmosphere can take up more moisture and then rain it down. We have more devastating heat waves and the sea levels are rising. Satellite data show that hurricanes are getting stronger, something that has also been long predicted by climate science because these tropical storms get their energy from warm near surface ocean temperatures and they are of course increasing. Of course, with every extreme event, the people who are in denial of reality come out and say, no, no, this has nothing to do with climate change. But the scientific evidence is overwhelming. 
And as you highlight that evidence, um, also break it down in terms of the numbers for us, because in one of your articles, you've argued that it's vitally important that emissions don't increase beyond uh, 2020 if the Paris climate goal um, of, of preventing this temperature, temperature rise to no more than 1.5 percent is to be achieved. Walk us through why that is so important 1, 5 degrees, and yes. how we are doing right now. Well, emissions are still rising, but they should be falling by now, because what counts really here is what we call the cumulative emissions. That is the total of CO2 that we have emitted since the beginning of industrialization. And what that means that every year where we add more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere means that we also have to reach zero emissions earlier to still reach the same climate goal, say the goals of the Paris Agreement. And uh, already the last report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has concluded we need to halve the global emissions by the year 2030. So we only have 10 years to cut the emissions in half. And that means we have to start now. We can't even afford to lose a single more year. An urgent call to action there. Climatologist Stefan Ramstoff, thank you for joining us here on DW to share that view. Thank you, my pleasure.